Oh, hello there, friends and family. So good to see you again. <laughs> Didn't see you walk up on this beautiful Saturday, midday. Oh, it might still be morning. I don't know. But anyway, we've been working. So we're a little moist and sweaty. Pardon me. But we're up here at the old clothesline pole planting where we got some tomatoes and beans put in and growing. But we're not quite finished. Let me show you what we got and where we need to go. Okay. Spooky, watch out for the beans there. Yep, they're coming up. No, don't walk over the beans. Guy? Yeah, go over there and push that wheelbarrow over to the burn pile, okay? No. Yep, that's cardboard. Yeah, I'm sure you're going to probably lay on. Well, if it was in the shade, you would, wouldn't you? <laughs> anyway, you can see, I got my supervisor with me, and he's checking it all out. And Spooky sees what I see. We're going to have a bunch of weeds come up. They're already coming up, and we just cleared this ground of everything just a few days ago. Less than a week. And anytime you disturb the ground, as you're seeing here, oh, you're going to roust up a lot of weed seed. You're going to wake it up. You're going to incorporate the two things it needs into the, its environment. One is oxygen, and the other is light. Yeah. And you're going to wake it up, and it's going to sprout. So what are we going to be doing? Well, we got some cardboard over there, as you can see. And before the rain came and drove us out, starting this here past Sunday, not this one past, but a week ago, we haven't been able to do much of the gardening, other than, you know, do things like make trellises, keep an eye on it, lay down our soaker hose, you know, stuff of that nature. But today we need to address the weeds that will be here. And there's many ways you could do this. I mean, we could lay down weed fabric. That's sort of a permanent solution. Spooky. It's not playtime. It's garden time, okay? Anyway, Spooky thinks it's playtime. But we got to address the weed situation like I was saying. And we could put weed fabric down. That'd be semi-permanent. Weed fabric lasts many years. And I mean, they do have certain biodegradable plastics you can put down that'll last, you know, a season. They're expensive now. We're going to use what we got, cardboard. In the past, we've used newspapers, yeah, craft paper, what have you. And where I'm going to lay the cardboard is basically in that center open area. Now, most people say, well, we need to plant something there. Well, anything I could plant there that would grow fast enough that I could get out before the tomatoes got up too large to shade it all out. Well, it's already past the growing season for that. Stuff like radishes, lettuces, you know, stuff of that nature. Cool season crops that all grow fast. It's too hot for that now. We're anywhere from lows of mid 80s to highs in the low 90s and I don't think we're going to see much cooler for the rest of the year <laughs> so here we are so all I'm going to do is I'm going to start laying out that cardboard on top of this ground and once I get it all laid out uh, those of you who haven't helped can come back over here and check it out before the final step takes place and I'll show you that too yeah, I mentioned work. Spooky took off. I can't say that I blame him. I see way out there underneath the oak trees there, Mr. Gray's lounging in the shade. So much for my help. Well, friend and family, as you can see, we've got the cardboard down. We surely do. And uh, we've used some of our uh, homemade... Uh, Earth staples, I believe they're called. Some call them landscape fabric staples. 
ground staples and what have you. But we got the bulk of the area covered in cardboard. And there's our homemade our staples right there. Next to our rubber hammer that we use to pop them through the cardboard into the ground. Yep, sometimes we got to make a little starter hole. The clothes hanger is just too weak to get through that cardboard, especially that thicker cardboard that comes from like Chewy. Yeah, we don't have no problem with Amazon or Walmart cardboard. But this is the first step. This will go a long way to blocking out a lot of light. And that's what the weeds need to germinate and continue to thrive. Well, they need oxygen. Well, they actually need nitrogen out of the air. And that, you know, plants breathe too. They transpire. And, uh, you know, they need light and they need moisture. But if you take away the light, they will not grow. And the cardboard goes a long way into doing that. Blocks a lot of light from hitting that ground and therefore allowing the weeds to thrive underneath it. Now I've tried just regular mulch. You know, like grass clippings, leaves. Yep, there's many weeds here in the deep south. They'll come on up through that. Of course, I will show you as time goes by, somehow. Weeds will find every little crack and crevice in this cardboard, and some of them will make their way up through. But this is not where it all stops. Now what we do, as we mow, which we're gonna have to be doing here later this afternoon into the evening, early evening hours, and we'll capture those grass clippings along with some leaves in there and they'll come over here and de be deposited on top of this cardboard yes they will up until they get to be about oh six to eight inches deep we've done it pretty much every year that we've grown not only here at the old clothesline pole plant but down by the south side fence you can see it being done on our main gardens back in the day on that there uh, photo montage we put together past times deep south bama shows the gardens really well throughout the many years yeah we'll pile the grass clippings up here at least six if not eight or more inches high because it don't take long for them to compress and even one year what i did i took a camera and I laid it faced up on the ground and I set it on time lapse. And then I piled up grass clippings and leaves up on top of it on a bright sunny day like you see right now. Sun is blazing. It's bright. Whew, and we are moist. And my whole uh, helper crew, you know, the kitty crew, uh, they're all wiped out. They've done retreated to the shade, but you know, they were a lot of help. You know, sometimes it took two of them because you know, they ain't got no thumbs, so they sort of got a tag team it. But anyway, my whole point was to see how high you'd have to pile up leaves and grass clippings or even hay and straw to block out the light. You'd be really surprised at a one foot thickness. You know, just laying it down on top of that camera, not packing it. There was still ample light reaching the ground level where I had that camera. Because I always got frustrated every year as I layer mulched in between my rows in the garden and my other planting areas. Some weeds would still thrive and make it up through. I didn't understand it until I buried a camera. <laughs> then I knew. And that's when I started incorporating cardboard whenever I had it on hand. It just blocked so much more light throughout the season. That one key ingredient all plants, not just weeds, need to thrive. Time to find some Gatorade and check on my kitty crew. 
I think Mr. Gray, he didn't go far. Mr. Gray, are you hanging out underneath the wheelbarrow? Good thing I walked by and seen you, huh? You're napping. You're looking good there in your new collar. You're looking really dapper. Yeah, I think white's one of your colors. I tried to get you a blue one. I know you want to be, you know, the blue and the gray. Just couldn't find a blue one. Please call it for you. Maybe next time. I'll say one thing about Mr. Gray there. I thought he would be, since he is feral cat. Yeah, very feral. He'd be a terror to get flea collar on, treat him for fleas. No, he never even made a whisper, except purring. As I measured it, put it on, pitted it. Yeah, and like I say, they're breakaway collars, so don't worry. And we got my other helper over here, Spooky. Yep. Stretched out underneath the shade of the oaks. He's all tuckered out from supervising, holding down carport, cardboard, all of that. Yep, get cleaned up there. Okay. And I think he's just going to nap. And we had Cleo around here, but she got tuckered out too and wandered on off. She's sporting her brand new. Oh, pure white flea collar as well. Yep, it's that time of year. Got to deal with it. And we approach it with not only the collars, but topical flea medication as well. Whew, because it is something. Come on, Mr. Gray. You going to go with Papa? Come on, buddy. Yep, that's my big buddy. And as you can see, he pretty much goes wherever I go now. Is that you, Cleo? Yep, that's Cleo. She's up here getting a snack. Y'all got plenty of water? I changed it out just a little bit ago. Cleo, you just looking beautiful in that brand new collar. I know it's not orange and got a reflective strip, but you do you, you do look good in that white. I think that might be visible enough. Ugh. Go up and get a snack, Spooky. Hey, Magoo, you gonna come out from under the pecan tree and grab a snack or you've already ate? Magoo. You can see I got them all. Well, other than Elrod and Heathcliff. And you never know when Heathcliff. You want to come over and grab a snack or you done ate, Magoo? No. Ate? No, you just want to chill? Okay. Yeah. Ooh, looks like I got some peppers in that wilting over here on the south side. Better do some water. Well, as you can see, we got the mower out. And we've been mowing. And in doing so, we've been capturing that wonderful mulch right there. In fact, we just stopped by to continue layering it down on the clothesline planting. And we gave the tomatoes all a little drink before we did that. And you can see what we're doing. And you can see what we're putting on it. It's a mixture of, uh, oh, uh, mulched up leaves and grass clippings. And I'd say right now, since we were mowing under the oaks, it's about 60, 40. 70 30 leaves to grass really don't matter we're just using it as a mulch now as the cardboard does decay and so does the mulch it'll add nutrients to this piece of ground the worms the roly-polies and everything else will feast upon the decaying organic matter as will the fungi the shrooms and the mycelium yeah very important but there's other reasons and this is about as you can see right now about four to five inches of grass clippings and leaves on top of this cardboard 
Well, why don't I put more? Well, I'd bury my tomatoes. <laughs> it's right up against them now. But I'll add more as the season progresses. Now there's one thing for sure, bear in mind. Any type of mulch, whether it's leaves, grass clippings, a combination thereof, hay, straw, cardboard, paper, even biodegradable plastic or what have you, will conserve moisture. We all know how important that's become here in recent years. I mean, we just got out of an extreme drought here in the Deep South two years back. And now the Midwest and West is going through an extreme drought as well. So they're quite aware of conserving water. And any mulch will do it. But there's another benefit that you might not know of. And that is, especially for the west, and southeast, southwest, deep south, it cools the soil. Yeah. That sun ain't beating down on top of that ground anymore. And therefore, the temperature of that ground is far cooler than it would be if it was just bare ground with that blaring sun beating down upon it. Isn't that right, Spooky? Wouldn't you concur? Nope, you're not driving. You can ride, okay? Yeah, occasionally Spooky likes to drive the yard tractor. Maybe I can catch that on camera one day. But we got to get this finished on up. And we've only got our small front yard between the porch and the street and that portion of the north lawn. So I'd say a quarter of the place is mowed. Still got three quarters to go. And you may be wondering what we'll do with that mulch. Well, we've got a mulch around the fig tree, which we'll lay down some fertilization. Probably some of that there 10, 10, 10, I'm thinking. Yep, I'm going to do it. And then we'll lay down mulch around the fig tree for the same reasons. Conserve moisture and lower soil temperatures. Yeah, both are big pluses. Here in the south and in most places now in North America. With these rising temperatures, for whatever reason you wish to believe or know, it's a thing. Climate does change, and it has. I've seen it. Just can't put my finger on the reason yet. But I'm not getting into all this. This is about mulch and what I do. It don't cost much, but my time and my effort. You might say, well, I don't got a grass catcher. Well, do like I did before I got one. Now, I raked this entire yard. Yes, I did. I put it in my wheelbarrow, and I took it to where I wanted it. Occasionally, the kitties helped. <laughs> As you can hear the commentary, maybe, from Spooky below my feet. So if you don't mind, let me get this finished up. Well, as you can see, we've got the whole plant covered up with wonderful grass clippings and leaves. All mulched up. Like I say, about four to five inches thick for now. It won't be long. Gravity and rain. We'll get her all matted down. Before long, it won't even be two inches thick. And we'll add to it. But we got a lot of yard left to mow. Yep, three quarters of it. So, we'll be gathering what we mow today and continuing on with our mulching. Next up, will be the fig tree and we already started clearing it away but we're going to take a short break because we're a little bit moist and we're getting tired it's about midday we've been out at it doing different things you know watering taking care of kitties mowing trimming oh since 7 30 this morning but I got a little more trimming here to do on the fig. 
and uh, rake out some more of that there centipede grass that's growing up in around it. And then we'll be ready to lay down some fertilizer. We're going to be using the 10 10 10 high yield. We surely are. Oh, about, oh, probably about a cup or so based on uh, the square footage there and the size of the bush. And we just place it around the drip line. And if you don't know what a drip line is, that's where your outer leaves are. So right underneath there. Of course, with the pig being as bare as it is this year, I think sprinkling it anywhere will get it rained into the soil just fine. But we're not going to do cardboard here. We're just going to start dropping off bag pools of that there uh, leaf and grass clipping mulch spreading it around till we get out here oh about I would say at least four feet away from the base of that tree here again that'll conserve moisture and keep the temperature of the soil around the tree nice and cool or cooler let me say which will be beneficial to the bush the fig will love it I never quite got around to doing it last year. Didn't have a whole lot of mulch. It was a fairly dry summer. That's why I'm trying to get a jump on it. With every mowing, do the crucial things I need to do. And once we get the pig all done upright, we'll move on to the blueberries. But we can't get in there working till after we get done harvesting berries. We'll knock off way too many. Right, Spooky? Yep. So I'm going to grab a Gatorade, sit down on the front porch. If you'd like one, just yell out. I got a few more left in the house. Maybe some of y'all brought one to share. Okay. Now I hear you, Spooky. You laying in semi-shade sun, huh? He's zonked out. My little uh, garden supervisor, he's just all tuckered out. And needed to take a cat nap. And I needed a little time too here on the front porch. And as always, or not quite as always, we're enjoying a Gatorade Frost. The thirst quencher. Glacier freeze we are. Crisp and cool. And if you're outside and you're sweating to the oldies or the newies, remember to replenish your electrolytes too with a Gatorade of your choice. Mine's Gatorade Frost on this particular day. And no folks, we're not sponsored by anybody. Yeah, we just like to share with you what we happen to be enjoying at the time. And that, and that's what we're having. And you know, for those of you who are sitting out there underneath the oak tree with me right now, you're enjoying one too. It could be a lemon lime as well. We only had so many of those uh, blue ones. I don't really get into the names. They're blue, they're yellow, they're orange, they're red. Yeah, that's pretty much how I go about it. Yeah, but they're good for you, especially when you're out exerting yourself and uh, losing fluids, i.e. sweat. Yeah, or as I re refer to it, moist. Oh, yeah, we got all around our clothesline pole planting mulched on up and cardboard and oh, leaf and grass clippings. It's good to go for a while. One thing it'll need now will be, you know, watering, uh, stringing up the tomatoes as they grow, and the occasional fertilization, which I normally do, you know, every two to four weeks, depending on whether I'm using a granular or a liquid foliar type fertilization. I do both, depending on the mood. But I mean, that's pretty much uh, what we've got going on. I've still got to finish up mowing. And then of course, you know, we got to do the weed eating, the trimming, some more pruning and some more clearing. That's all on the agenda for next week. We do got to make a trip on up to our uh, county uh, 
seat dade bill and get us some of them their car tags yep surely do it's that time of the year to renew our car tags and yeah, maybe if y'all are good i'll take you along you never know with me or we may sit down and have some lunch up there while we're there who knows but hey until i uh, my faithful friend buddy compadre and co-worker yep my faithful spooky and you might see he's sporting a nice white a flea collar too <laughs> come to find out he thought he should have one and you'll never guess who else got one speedy of all things yeah well anyway until I spooky speedy Cleo Mr. Gray hey there's Mr. Gray Mr. Gray Mr. Gray he's conked out underneath the Buford Holly and of course sometimes Elrod Magoo and Heathcliff and little Gracie and Lily bit see y'all on the next video y'all take care stay safe may God bless you as you bless others hey for those of you out there like me Enduring the heat and getting things done, remember to stay hydrated. Remember to take breaks. We're not as young as we once was. Remember that. Don't fool yourself. Later on.